Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my C video tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about how to dynamically allocate memory using the memory allocator function. If you missed any of the previous parts of this tutorial, I provide a link in the upper right hand corner, and of course, all the code is available in the description for the video. So, I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, normally, whenever we allocate memory, we allocate it directly inside of our code. So whenever we create a character data type, it's going to get 8 bits. 8 bits is set aside inside of memory. 8 bits, of course, is one byte. And if we want to store more information than that, too bad. Also, whenever we want to create an integer, it gets 4 bytes. No more, no less. But you may say, well, a character array will allow us to store pretty much as many bytes of data as we could possibly want. The only problem is we have to hard code that. We cannot actually increase that size or increase that size of the array at runtime. That's where the memory allocator function comes in. And that's basically what you do with the memory allocation function. That's what I call it. You can call it malloc or you can call it whatever you want to call it. Basically, what it does is allocates memory at runtime. That's it. And what you're basically going to do is pass over to it at runtime the amount of space you want, and it's going to provide it. So I'm just going to create a little example program here. Let's say amount of numbers to store, and this is an integer, and this is going to hold the number of numbers that we're going to say to the memory allocator that we want to store for us. And just go printf. How many numbers should we store? We're then going to use scanf. This is going to be an integer. And we're going to say amount of numbers to store. Then what we're going to do is create an integer pointer. And what it's going to do is set aside enough space to hold the number of ints that we just asked for. And it's a pointer, so I'm going to put a P in front of it. That's just something that I like to do. Then to it, I am then going to put this typecast in here. Now, inside of C, you do not need this. And actually, some people prefer that it's not used. You do, however, you use it or need it if you're going to be programming inside of C++. So I'm just going to put it there just to show that I am casting this pointer. Amount of numbers to store. And then I'm going to multiply that times. And this is where you're going to define exactly how much space you want the memory allocator to set aside. Size of int. It's going to be storing integers inside of it. And I'm just going to multiply the number of integers that they said they wanted. And that's it. That's the memory allocator function. Then what I want to do here, and this is important to do because if the memory allocator wasn't able to set aside the amount of space that we wanted, it is going to send back the value of null. So we're going to say if not null, then we're going to set up an integer i, say print f, enter a number or quit, basically. I'm going to set this up so that if they enter anything that's not a number, an integer number, it's going to quit. Then what we're going to do is just create ourselves a while loop, and we're going to say that we're going to continue accepting numbers as long as i is less than the amount of numbers to store. Throw that in there. And we're going to say scanf, and we're going to say that we want to get ourselves an integer. Skip to the next line. And then we're going to store our values by referring to the pointer. And I'm actually going to show you a couple different ways to access this information. This time, I'm going to show you how to access the information using array notation. And then the next time, we're going to use pointer arithmetic. And as long as one comes back, we know that they entered the proper information. If they enter anything that's not an int, it's going to kick it out. And then we're just going to say printf, enter a number, or quit. And then we're just going to increment i and store all that information as if it's an array. Then after we have all those numbers entered in, I'm going to say printf. I'll throw a new line inside of there, and I'm going to say you entered the following numbers. Then I'm going to cycle through those numbers using a for loop. And I'm just going to define j inside of here. While j is less than i, which is the number of numbers they entered, I could also go in here and force them to enter the maximum number, but we don't need to do that. It gives us a lot of leeway. And then I can go printf and print out all these numbers. And this time we can just refer to it using array notation like that. And we just have to change this to j. And then after we're all done with all that stuff down here, we are going to use 
a function called free and what it's going to do for us is return all of the memory that was allocated by the memory allocator function back to the system to use in this program which it does it actually this isn't even needed there's a lot of misconceptions about free and what it does and what it doesn't do the reason why free isn't really needed this time is because all allocated memory is returned back to the system when the program terminates what free is really used for is in situations in which you are allocating large blocks of memory over and over again without returning it. And if you would say, let's say I'm going to get into this, let's say you get 10k of data. You use it, but you do not use free to send it back to the system. However, as your computer program continues, it has no use for that 10k. You then come in and you get another 10k. And then you come in and you get another 10k. Eventually, if you keep doing that, and I just want to point out, no longer used, but memory not freed. So you get 10k. The rest of the program, you don't use this 10k, but you do not free it. Then you get another 10k. Again, no longer used, but you do not return it. And again, and again, and again. If you do this enough times, you will have what is called a memory leak. And that basically just means you run out of memory and your program crashes, and that's a bad, bad thing. So use free all the time. Just understand that in this situation, we don't really need to use it, and you do not need to fret about the idea of not using free, thinking it's going to crash the whole computer. That's not going to happen. Okay, so we're going to save it. Bounce over here and compile it, and there you go. How many numbers do you want to store? And in this situation, I am going to say 10. It doesn't matter. Enter anything. And I'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I'll type in Q. See that it ends, and it prints out that information. So that is the basics of exactly how the memory allocator function works. Now let's go in and do something a little bit more complicated. Now we're going to dynamically allocate memory inside of here and store structs inside of it. And of course I have tutorials on structs if you haven't seen them before. I'm going to come in here and create a product struct and inside of it I'm going to have a float that's going to represent price and I'm going to have a character array that is going to have product name inside of it and I'm just going to say 30 characters is big enough and for this example it is. So then we have to actually create a pointer to the struct so I'm going to go like this products then I'm just going to create a couple junk variables that I'm going to need later on to iterate through this guy then I'm going to say int number of products because we're going to allow them to dynamically say how many products they want to enter. And I'm going to say printf, enter the number of products to store. I'm going to use scanf again, and we're going to store number of products. Then we have to get our pointer that we created up here and point to the address for the memory that we're going to have the memory allocator allocate for us. And it's a struct, and it's a specifically, it's a product struct. And then we're going to say a lock and do exactly the same thing. Number of products, like this, times, and then we can also come in here and go size of struct product, which is also something that can be defined, of course. Data type like any other. Nothing special about it, except you created it, which I guess makes it kind of special. So that's how that works. And what we're going to do is create a for loop. i is equal to 0. That's Remember I said junk little values I'm going to use. That's where that comes from. I'm going to say, well, i is less than the number of products that they said they wanted. I'm just going to keep this simple this time. And then we're going to increment i. Say printf. Enter a product name. And then I can come in here and I'm going to show you how to use pointer arithmetic this time to cycle through our data. So we're going to be getting ourselves a string. And then we can go p products. This is using pointer arithmetic, of course, which we've covered before. And then we just point to product name, which of course is this guy right here. There we are. Okay, so we got that. And then we have to do exactly the same thing for the price, enter a product price. And of course, make sure this is i and not one. That's important. There we go, that's better. So it's gonna cycle through and store inside of there. And then here we just change this to price. And after we have all those stored inside of there, we can come in here and go printf and do something like product stored. And then next time I'm going to do a little bit more complicated struct sort of pointer slash memory allocator program. 
But for now, I think this is good. So I want you to completely understand how this works. And then J, and then we can say printf, and it's going to be a string, and let's throw, I don't know, a tab inside of there to do something different. And then we're going to say we want two decimal places, and then let's throw a new line inside of that. And then we have to put the information inside, so we're going to go P products, just like we did up here, P products. And here we're going to do plus J, and we're going to say we want our product name. Skip down to the new line here, and let's just copy this, paste that in there. And then this is going to be price, so it's not that hard, like that. And then here we have to free, we don't have to, but we're going to because we're good programmers. We're going to say free the pointer. And I have a little bit of a bug here. Up here, change this to F. See, prices float. Make sure you don't make that error. And if we file save that, jump over here, pile it, enter the number of products to store. Let's say we want to enter error three, enter our product name. Let's say egg, and let's say the price is 25 cents, and then let's say fish, and let's say the price is 11, and then we'll say bread, and the price of that is $3. And there you can say product stored, egg, fish, bread. So that's how you use the memory allocator function. As the tutorial continues, I'll get more and more complicated. Just want to ease you into the process, though. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.